let me begin by acknowledging uh, the presence of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, retired General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. His Excellency will remember when he and his colleagues met in Nairobi on the 27th and 29th days of August, the year 2004. And Your Excellency will remember then, you issued a communique on the 28th day of August. And you'll remember then, Your Excellency, that many statements were made. You will remember your colleague, the President of Kenya, then the late Mwai Kibaki saying, that indeed, East African community is significant because we cannot continue to divide the people who are culturally joined at the hip. You will remember your colleague, the late Benjamin William Kappa saying, we cannot afford the luxury of disunity because a united East Africa will create a common market which will ensure that our people realize their goals and desire. Your Excellency, you are the more dramatic of the three on that day. You said, and permit me to remember what you said, that we cannot allow East Africa to be continue to be balkanized, nor can we allow Africa to continue to be balkanized in 53 countries which are weak and which are incapable of negotiating with other parts of the world we must stop that balkanization. You said that, Your Excellency. Today, Your Excellency, in your very presence, we are interrogating the question as to whether we are still balkanized. And Your Excellency, if you permit me to be honest and candid, the, the steps we have made thus far must be celebrated, but we could have done better. We could have done better because, Your Excellency, you will also remember you yourselves on, in the year 2004 were so dissatisfied with the pace of integration that in 2004 you empaneled a body constituting representatives from all the three countries to fast track political federation. They went round East Africa, they went to Uganda, they took the pulse of the politicians, they went to Tanzania, took the pulse of the politicians, they came to Kenya, took the pulse of the politicians, and they did not stop there. They went to the business community and took their pulse. They went to the universities and took their pulse. They went everywhere and they submitted a report to you in the year 2005 in which they claimed, and I use the word claim deliberately, Your Excellency, they claimed that the East Africans had declared unequivocally that they wanted integration urgently. And they said that by the year 2013, we would become one federation. They said that by the year 2013, we would, one, one, we would have one East African president, they said. They said that we would have one currency. They said good things. But the reality, which is a sad reality, is that we are nowhere near realizing those goals. Which then begs the question, what can we therefore do? Because... It is true that our diagnosis of our problem is right. We know what we ought to do. We have made many declarations. We have created many institutions. We have the East African Legislative Assembly, which is functional. We have the East African Court of Justice, which is functional. We have other institutions which are functional. But yet there is a sense in which we have not made the nuclear decision. And let me be understood to mean when I say the nuclear decision, the decision that will change the matters in such a fundamental way that the farmer 
sitting in Gulu, when he is asked about East Africa, he or she can relate to it. The nuclear decision that will ensure that somebody sitting in Iringa can relate to the East African community. The reality that when somebody is sitting in Meru in Kenya will be able to identify with the East African community. That is what we are looking for. And today we are assembled here to interrogate ourselves. We are assembled here to ask ourselves uncomfortable but necessary questions. We are assembled here to ask ourselves what then it is that we can do to move the agenda forward. And to move the agenda forward in a manner that is conscious of the fact that if we don't expedite the process of federation, the process of unification, then we will become sitting ducks for those whose diabolical intentions and scheme not only require but demand that we remain in our state of disunity. Your Excellency, you will remember several years ago, you said when we were talking about East African community and you are talking about the insignificance of our small markets, if my memory serves me well, and it normally does, Your Excellency. You asked, why should Kenya say that it has a big economy, bigger than what? Why should Tanzania say that it has an even slightly bigger economy than Uganda? And Uganda say that it has a bigger economy than Sudan. Your Excellency then said, that is an exercise in futility. It is three dwarfs trying to argue which one is taller than the other. They are all dwarfs, even if one is taller than the other. I'm submitting to Your Excellency that we cannot continue to be dwarfs. If we are dwarfs, the growth hormone, the steroid that will make us grow taller is federation. And I'm submitting that we have the intellectual wherewithal because we remember that a federated East African community will be a building block for a federated Africa. And I'm aware that we have now expanded the Democratic Republic of Congo is now with us. I'm aware that South Sudan is now with us. I'm aware that Rwanda is now with us, that Burundi is now with us. I'm also aware that the Somalis have also indicated their desire to be with us. We are some kind of magnet that is attracting others. But before we consolidate, what then is it that we can do? Because Your Excellency and Honorable Members here are present, we must remember that we are, as we are talking about Federation of East Africa, there is no shortage of individuals out there who would not want us to unite. If you did not know, but I suspect you do, there is a new scramble for Africa. That scramble for Africa requires and demands that Uganda remains alone that Tanzania remains alone, that Kenya remains alone. The only way in which we can immunize ourselves against the diabolical machinations of the new scramblers for Africa is our unity. And I'm submitting to us that you who are members of, Af of East African community, and members of the East African Legislative Assembly, what is it that you can do? You must constitute yourselves into missionaries of old. Go out there with zeal. It is not the shortage of protocols that we have a problem with. It is not the lack of clarity of treaties that we have a problem with. It is our commitment, it is our desire to go out into our villages and hamlets and to ensure that we have men and women who when they go to Arusha, they are missionary, they have the missionary zeal and they are talking about East Africa. 
I now know that in the interim period, IALA members are elected by respective parliaments. I look forward to the day when that will be a thing of the past and you shall be elected by universal suffrage. I look forward to that day because it is only in those days that we'll then be able to animate the people of East Africa so that they are better able to appreciate that there is an agenda in Arusha which must be undertaken. I look forward to that day. I look forward to the day in parliamentarians in the respective countries when what happens in Arusha is much more important than what happens in Kampala. You know, sometimes we protect very little things. I remember an old story. Many times when we are told you want 100% of a rabbit, you think 100% of a rabbit is bigger than 10% of an elephant. I'm urging you to go for 10% of the elephant that East African Federation. Because it is only in that way that we will be able to change this continent.